Welcome your faces back to episode number 60. Yes, I have done 60 episodes of Profit or Loss. The series where I buy faulty electronic items on eBay, attempt to fix them and sell them for a profit. This video has kindly been sponsored by the amazing people at iFixit. More on them a little bit later where I can tell you how to get 10% off your order. Let's see if we can smash the profit margins out of the park today with this PlayStation 5. I've also got some new batteries for my lights. There we go. Would you look at that? I just swiped it off, but it looked like it came with a free hair. How kind of the seller. I paid a grand total of £200 for this PlayStation 5. The listing on eBay states, faulty, no power, no lights or sounds when you press the power button. System has been opened up previously, but no idea what was done. Doesn't look like anything has been taken out. So I think this is going to be one of those interesting ones. I hope anyway. All right. Initial looks very clean, uh, almost too clean. You know, the back looks immaculate. The two side panels are in very, very, very good condition. I don't actually think I can see a single mark here. The front of it, tiny, tiny bit scratched up at the top, but overall looking really, really, really good, which can mean very bad news. Let's plug it in, give it a test, and just make sure that what the seller said is accurate. Okay, we don't have any bangs, fizzes, or pops. That's good news. Does it power on? No, it doesn't. Does nothing. The Jake button also does nothing. Good stuff. That's what we like to see. Which, if you're watching, you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably think, why? Why is that good? Let's pop off the lid and see what the situation is. Here we go. All right. As confirmed, warranty sticker has been taken off and subtly put back. So we're just going to get rid of that. Okay. Initial impression isn't looking too bad, I guess, but I'm going to try and not get ahead of myself. Let's grab our trusty iFixit screwdriver set. Taking the PlayStation 5 apart requires a T8 screw bit, actually, as well as a Phillips. Okay. One thing I can verify is that they have been this deep into the console because if I take off the antenna cables here, and this is one of the earlier revisions of the PlayStation 5, you can see that already the tape is snapped and it has gone a little bit yellowish. So I think the previous owner was a smoker. Let's take off this metal cover, which has about 37,000 screws on. What I will say is that this board is looking relatively clean. However, there is one area in particular which has caught my eye straight off the bat. If we just scoot on over here, can you see? This is the back of the HDMI Retime IC, and there is a little bit of flux just about here. So correct me if I'm wrong, maybe the person has tried to change out the HDMI retimer. So I'm going to get the rest of the board out of the chassis and see exactly how far they've gone with this board. Place your bets right now in the comment section down below. Is that the only thing they've changed? Actually, before I do that, we should probably measure voltages whilst we have the power plugged in. So we ground our lead here. Do we have 12 volts? Dun, 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 dun. It looks like it because it's loading up. There it is. So we've got the 12. Do we have five? Ooh. 0 0.17, 0 0.16. Okay, so maybe we don't have the 5 volt. We've got 3.3 there. We've got 2.5 down here. 0 0.8 there. Oh, wait, no, we do have 5. Sorry, I was measuring in the wrong place. We do have 5 volts, as you can see. Okay, so it's not looking too bad, you know, currently anyway. 5 volts down here, but 5.2 seems a little bit weird. What about our RAM? What do we have? 1.3. If I go to push this on, wait, is this on? What? It's... It's on. I'm turning it off. What's just happened? The device powered on. It didn't power on when I first started the video, right? Or am I going crazy? So maybe is it something that I've, that I've removed from the board? I've never had this, by the way. I'm actually just going to screw back the clamp, then turn it on and see if I do get a display. The HDMI retimer, from what I can see from the flux, has definitely been changed. Then I'll take out the board and just double check all the liquid metal, etc. as well. So we put pressure back on the APU. Does it turn on? It does, look. Blue light. Let's switch over to HDMI 1. Do we get a display? HDMI cable's in. No, we don't get one. And we have a white light. Okay, interesting. I'm going to take the board out anyway and see what's being done with this. But I have a feeling I know exactly why I've managed to fix this PlayStation 5. I feel like it had something to do with the magic and power of the iFixit screwdriver. For most people watching the channel, iFixit introduces itself. They boast pristine quality tools and parts for reasonable prices. They have over 104,000 free accessible step-by-step -step guides on their website from mobile phones to laptops, game consoles, and tons of other gadgets. They're also extremely noob friendly for people like me. If you ever fancied doing some tinkering yourself, this would be a great time to start. Pick up the ProTech Toolkit, which is a personal favorite of mine. It comes with a screwdriver set that will completely suit all of your DIY needs, as well as several other accessories which will help you get the job done, like this full range of spudges. iFixit have specific toolkits available for you to use. Take this iPhone 7 battery kit as an example. Purchase the battery you need along with all the tools, scroll down a little bit on the page, and you'll be met with a full 
guide on how to do it. People always ask me, how did I get into repairs? And what would you need specifically to get started on that journey? And I would gladly recommend iFixit tools every day of the week. It's amazing to have iFixit as a channel sponsor. They really are the forefront of right to repair and exactly what this channel is about. The key thing here is that you use the discount code JDT. 10. Use this in the basket to qualify for your 10% discount. There is a but. There are only a limited amount of codes, so you do have to be quick using it. And if you do use the code, let me know in the comment section down below. Big thank you again to iFixit. And now back to the video. Let's get this board out then and see what the damage is or what the damage isn't, I guess. Clear up our liquid metal. I see that quite a bit of flux has been used in this area and it's stained the PCB copper. Okay, so our, our issue isn't the powering on aspect anymore. How does the soldering look around the retimer? I'll be honest. It looks a bit loosey-goosey. It doesn't look like we have full connection on some of those pads, you know? Actually, this corner over here looks a little bit raised. Let's check here as well. That side, a couple of bare joints. This side up top, yeah, that is not connected, is it? No wonder we're not getting a display. And finally, this side. I mean, that actually looks okay on this side. Now, I might just go for a little reflow here. The chip looks pretty beaten up, but at the same time, it's also not soldered onto the board correctly. So I think let's just go for a reflow and then put it back in the chassis and test it, see if it works. How's the actual HDMI port? Yeah, that looks really, really good. I think that's factory, you know. Is that factory? Yeah, it's definitely factory. So by the looks of it, this had a short on the HDMI retime IC. Somebody has tried to fix it, wasn't able to, and then has just listed it on eBay as faulty. I don't know what the situation of the solder is on the pads underneath. I'm gonna go 460 degrees Celsius, airflow speed of 70%. If this wasn't the issue as to why it was turning off, maybe there was a dodgy disk drive cable or you know, even one of the front panel ribbon connectors might've been an issue. So I, would, I will need to investigate that. We'll, let, we'll need to put the PS5 back together fully. But for the time being, I just need to get this down. Let's just get a bit of flux around there, help with the situation. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a push down, so I'm gonna wait for that solder to solidify before going ahead and giving it a push. So I'm gonna give it a push now. Tweezer is slightly wide. Let's just see how we're doing with a good old reflow. Clear the majority of the flux whilst the board is hot. It will make your life 10 times easier. Let's get that clean and then we can finish it off with a bit of IPA and a toothbrush. My favorite combination. There we go. The chip already looks happier to me. It might be that this IC just doesn't work, but we'll see. The damage might have already been caused. Let's check the connection. That looks a little bit more connected than what it was, that's for sure. Check this one. That one looks good. Over here. Maybe not there, look. You see the, the, the right of the chip. I don't know if that's connected or not. I'm going to say probably not. So we'll come back to it. And this side looking gravy so i think by the looks of it it's just over here where we have these three solder joints maybe there wasn't enough solder under the ic we're going to come in with a little bit more heat from our hot air gun just to warm the board up make the soldering easier now we use our metcal thin tip soldering iron plenty of flux just here and just run that solder over these pads hopefully we can get a good enough bond there we go. Let's check that. I don't feel the necessity to do it to all sides if we don't have to. Again, cleaning whilst the board is nice and hot. Are we cooking good looking? Yes, we are. Look at that. Lovely jubbly. Strong joints now. Whilst we're here, over into diode mode. And let's check out some of these readings. What do we have on this diode here? 0 0.6. Good. And we've got pin 19 and 18. What do we have? So we've got 0 0.52, 0 0.6 there. That's good. What do we have on pin 18? Roughly around about the same. 0 0.45, 0 0.46, not too shabby. This should be ground, which it is. What do we have here? 0 0.52, 0 0.6, open line, which I'm pretty sure it's meant to be. 0 0.61, now we just have the data lines. 0 0.76, 76, 76, 76, 76, 76, 76. I think those readings pretty much check out and I'm more than happy to put this back into the chassis and give it a test. If this does fix it, the person who previously done this didn't do a bad job. They were so, so close. As for the no power, I can't explain it just yet. I might put it all back together and we might still have no power. All right, bare necessities back together. We have the clamp, the HDMI and the power. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Will it display an image? I guess, does it power on? We get a beep. We get the lights over here. Perfect. Does it go to a white light is the question. There we go. We got a white light. Do we get a display? Change the screen. Nothing just yet. What about now? Does it say HDMI 1? 
No, it doesn't. All right, so we're back on here. We did in fact have something very similar in a live stream recently. If I ground my probe and we're back in DC voltage, as you can see up here, I'm just gonna stick probe here. What do we get? Okay, so we do get 3.3. So here, what we should have, which we do is 5.5 and then the output 3.3 which we do. Okay, that's fine. Let me take the board out of the chassis. It could be that the retimer is actually bad. Meter in continuity mode. I'm just seeing if we've got any shorts anywhere that we shouldn't have. I mean, I don't know if this chip has been changed or not, but this kind of looks like fresh leaded solder here. No shorts on these caps. I'm assuming no shorts on these little ones either, because otherwise we'd have bigger issues on our hand. Perhaps no power, you see. They seem to be okay. What do they measure in diode mode? 0 0.1414. 0.3314. Just checking the diode here. 0 0.53. That seems to be okay. Here's 0 0.6. Here on this resistor, 0 0.62 as well. Everything seems to check out around the HDMI port as well from our readings. Just going to measure this little diode on the back and this cap. That's going to be ground, isn't it? Yep. And what do we get here? 0 0.47. That reading seems okay. And on this cap, I think it's open line. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna place my bets on a different encoder IC and just see what happens. I'm gonna use the iFixit tweezers here because they have a much bigger grab than the, uh, the standard ones that I have. So again, we're coming in 460 degrees Celsius. Airflow speed is 70%. There we go. It would be rude of me to not now flood this with leaded solder just to ensure that we have enough solder on the pads, you see, when we put that new chip on. There we go. Clear up this flux. Again, whilst the board is hot. And now we just place our donor chip here. This has been taken from a donor board, so whether it works or not, I have no idea. Same temperature as what we took it off with. 460. 70% airflow. Coming with some flux now. I'm going to lower the airspeed because I don't want the flux flying everywhere. So I've actually gone with a modest 30% now. We will need to squeeze down because of how much this chip has been messed about with and the board in general, the pads. Come off the heat, quick clean, inspect the job, see how we got on. Might need to go over the pads. Uh, do you know what? I might even, I'm going to have to move that up a bit, I think. A little bit wonky. There we go, that's better. Soldering iron, go around the IC. Come in with our flux. We'll have to rotate the board around here to make do. Lovely. Nice, clean on the flux. Okay, let's check our work. Give me that good news. This side looking great. This side looking great. Great. And great. Nice one. Test number two, or is this gonna give us a bit of a runaround like I've had on previous videos recently when it comes to no display? I'll save you the absolute spill. It didn't work, exactly the same thing. So we've tried the new retimer now. I've investigated the components around it, but I, something tells me I'm gonna have to do a little bit more poking. FYI, I have also tried to start the console into safe mode. I've tried two separate cables as well. Still no luck. Right, let's go back into diode mode and just do some more prodding. Just confirm a few things. This is a donor board. Is it 22 ohms here? It is indeed 22. And here, 6.8K, that's fine. That's within scope. What about this resistor? 55K, here we have 55K as well. 1.2K on that resistor, 1.1K there. I get a reading of 3.8K on a donor for this one. And it shows 1.2, 1.28, 1.1, 1.134. Let me check another donor. All right, so I'm meant to have 1.1 and in the 30s. That's showing 1.1, that's fine here. Also, yeah, around about the 1.3, that's fine within scope. And this one was in the 30K. Oh, that's 100K there. And it's 100K on another board as well. That's this resistor here. Just to confirm, 100K. Main board, board we're working on. Is this 100K? Oh, okay, now it is within scope. I get 0 0.51 that way on that diode. And then I get 2.3 the other way. So we get a read in both ways. I wonder if that's the same with this one. 2.3, other way, 0 0.5. Yeah, okay, fine, within scope. These are the diodes on the back of the HDMI circuit. And I think we should read somewhere between 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 on these diodes if we measure them. Okay, 0 0.5, there we go, 0 0.6, all right. Is that a bit low? 0 0.5, 0 0.6, does it measure the other way? No, that one's fine. This one, also fine. What do we have on this resistor here? 1.8K, this resistor, yeah, 1.8K as well. That checks out on a donor. Okay, so on this cap here, 
I measure 0.16. If I measure on the same cap on a donor board that has an encoder IC, I get 0.33 in voltage drop. So it's quite a big difference there. It's almost double. Here I get 0.5, which is this cap here. What do I get? 0.35. So what about this little transistor? 0.35 here, 0.32. So that's fine. 0.34 there on the same cap on the donor, 0.5. And all the resistors on the donor board are also 0 ohm. All right, minor discovery, but I don't know if this is going to uh, make a difference. Here I get 5 volts. This is just to show that um, I've actually got power going into the board. So you see how we got 5 volts there? Supposedly, we should get 0 0.8 volts here, but we get nothing. Down here, we should get 3.3. On that pin but we get nothing and we should get 1.7 here but we don't get anything and i don't know if it's because of this or whether it's the encoder because it goes right to this path here i'm pretty certain as well i'm meant to be getting like 0 0.8 volts or something on these caps but i'm again not getting anything nothing there i'll go this side nothing there but they're definitely not shorted and again if we go up here the five volts there so it's a strange one. So it could be another bad encoder or potentially like this I see here. To confirm that, I have a donor here. We'll just check on this one. Same board revision, 010. So yeah, we get five volts. What do we get here? 3.3. Do we get like 1.7 here? Yes, we do. And 0 0.8 or something here? Yeah, 0 0.8 there. Exactly as I thought. Interesting. Progress has been made though. So that's good. At least we found what, what it's not doing. Right, I actually swapped this chip out with another one and I was getting the exact same thing. However, I made another discovery. Even though the diode readings seem to match up on this IC here, this is our donor, okay? If I give this board 12 volts and I measure here, we get, as you can see, 3.3 volts. On this rail, we get 3.3. On this rail, we get 1.8. And here, practically nothing. If we go over to the board we're working on, exactly the same IC, measure here, we get the standard 3.3. Now down here, we're meant to get 3.3. We get nothing. I get zilch. Up here, was it 1.8? I was getting on the other board. Nothing. If I measure on this cap, just to make sure it's not dry flux. Yeah, nothing at all. So I think it's this I see. It's kind of what I've whittled it down to anyway. Obviously, I could be wrong, but that seems like the next logical step rather than continuously changing the encoder, which is on the back of this. So let me swap this out. Whilst I'm here, I might as well just apply a tiny bit of flux and come in with our soldering iron just to make sure we're okay. Lovely. All right, I'm begging. I see the same as what I had on that donor. If so, I think we've got a really strong chance. And it might even mean that that first encoder we took off was actually okay. Maybe not. Maybe it was both of them. Here we go. Moment of truth. Very nervous. 3.3 here. Yes, we get 3.3 here, which is on this path as well. Yeah. Do we get 3.3 on this bottom one? No, we don't. Up here? No. Okay, so we don't get 3.3. Is that a bad encoder then? It shows that, that maybe this chip was actually fine. I've checked everything else and everything seems to be okay, except for this IC and the one on the back. So little fun fact here. I'm not going to spoil what you currently see on the screen, but just know I changed out this five-legged transistor again, but didn't record it. All right, just, just remember that and bear it in mind. I think I'm just going to have to change out the encoder again for the one that I'm measuring that definitely works, just to kind of rule it out completely. I'm just putting this on the record as well. This is inside the HDMI port. As you can see, it's clean as a whistle. So I don't think we have any issues going on there. I've checked the soldering around the HDMI IC and we seem absolutely fine. All sides looking good. So it's the moment of truth. I've got a good feeling. I'm just going to check for the voltage here. Do we get what we need? So 12 volts into the board. Do we get 3.3 here? Yes, we do. We get 3.3 here. Good. Do we get whatever it is here? No, we don't. On this line? Nothing. Ah, I really thought that was it. So let me get this straight. I've tried three different encoders now. I've replaced this IC and this IC right here, which I believe are on the same path and feed into the HDMI chip here. And it's still not working. All right, I'm injecting 12 volts again. So what do I get here? Nothing. No zilch. I get nothing. What about here? Nothing. And finally here? Nothing. All right. Okay. I've, um, I'm a little bit clueless at the moment. I've spent ages on this board. So what I'm going to do is change out this here, the 15JL, these resistors and these diodes and see if that makes any difference whatsoever.
Okay, pretty much everything has now been changed over. Let's see if we get voltage. All boils down to this, all right? What do we get here? 3.3, okay. We're looking for something here in three, two, one. Nothing, still nothing. I don't know. I don't know what it is. All right, so I've had a really, really good sleep. It's the next day now. Yes, I'm wearing the same hoodie, but I just feel like I needed to reset my brain a little bit. And doing so, we've made a discovery. This is the same circuit that you just would have seen. I'm gonna plug the console in, okay? And I'm gonna turn the console on. There we go, so we have power. Now, I'm gonna measure in the exact same place. Look at the voltage in the top right, ready? So here, we have 3.3. Here, we now have 1.8. And down here, we also have 3.3 well 3.19 by the looks of it so not quite 3.3 so i don't know if there is something wrong there but this is 1.8 and this is as close to 3.3 as we're getting meaning that by the looks of it that circuit is technically fine the, the specific part that i was looking at which begs the question i have no idea what to actually do next i live stream on both twitch and youtube which is exactly what i'm going to do now to try and come up with a solution and just basically learn on the job. So the next clip you see will be me going live and uh, I don't know whether I'm gonna fix this or not, but it's gonna be fun, hopefully. Maybe a little collection loose there, but I think we're gonna get the diary. So you guys saw you guys saw where I'm on about. It should be around about 0 0.7, I believe, here. Oh, so I'm not actually, <laughs> okay, fine, all right, interesting. Well, that data line's missing, isn't it? Okay, so maybe I should just reflow that real quick or at least go around it with the uh, with the soldering line. Right, whilst that's hot, flux. So, diode mode, just want to make sure that we get this now. Here yeah, we do. So, 0 0.7. 0 0.7, cool. Okay. Is it a 0, 1, 0 board? Because I've got the same here. Look, that's, that's the correct orientation for me. Steto, I think, I, I think. Oh, wait, Y09? Oh. Oh, wait, this is, zero, this is a 010 zero as well. Wait there, Y09, just trying to find another Y09 that I've not taken off and just confirm. Y09, Y09, wait, what? Wait, but why is there a solder pad there? Why is there a pad here, chat? But why is there a pad here? And there's not a pad here. There is no shot. Wait, is there, a, there's no leg here, right? But why is there a pad on the board is what I'm saying. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. I refuse to believe that that is the wrong way around. Who said that? Was it Steto? There is no pad. There's no pad. What? So I've just swapped it. Where's my flux? Oh, I'm such a moron, but it's it's funny. You have to laugh. Right, Y09, are you now comfy? So I've turned the, I've turned the console on. Uh, it goes 5.1, so that's fine. Uh, the console's on, so I'm going to test here this little chip down here. So I get one point, I get 1.8, and on the bottom I get 3.3, .3, so that's good. Uh, do I get 3.3 .3 here? I do. So I get 3.3 .3 there. I get 3.3 .3 at the bottom as well, right? 3.3. Yes, that's fine. Okay. I'm just going to do some random checks on the back of the encoder. So I get 1.8 there. I'm just testing on a few caps now just to see what kind of voltages we get. I get 0 0.8 volts there. That's probably right. What do I get on this little resistor? 0 0.8. That's, again, probably right. Could be could be fine. Oh, no, wait. Bad connection. 1.8. The enable line of the y, of Y18 and Y09 comes from the south bridge. That's interesting, Toltec. The south bridge hasn't been touched before. Thought I'd mention it this time as well. I did try UART to see if I had any errors which would possibly relate to the fact of it having no image. But I'm pretty sure it turns out as long as you get a white light on a PS5, you're not going to get any error codes. So we didn't get anything with UART. As agreed with chat, the next thing I was going to do was replace the encoder IC. Failing that didn't work. This will be the fourth encoder. We then replace the south bridge. I think that was actually pretty clean. That looks really good, chat, yeah? Can we all agree? That side anyway, at least. That side, really good. That side, really good. Really good as well. South Bridge. I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. South Bridge. I'm still not getting what I need. Three, two, 
One. No, 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 no. I've killed it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We go. We go. We go. I'm going to go for a, a quick reflow. Um, not add any flux and then obviously get rid of any flux that we might have underneath the south bridge, okay? That looks a lot cleaner, chat, yeah? That looks a lot cleaner, right? Three, two, one. Sick. Right. White light. You'll be able to tell from my face, remember. You'll be able to tell from my face whether this works or not, okay? Still no display. South bridge changed. Changed south bridge. Changed all those Y things. Got a working encoder that I've taken from a known working board. Resist. All the diodes have been changed. Resistors have been changed. I've not touched any caps. Chat, what's our thought process on potentially the port? I, I'm, 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 I'm going to call the port next. No, the, the filters are fine as well. I'm not getting five volts. So the data lines are absolutely no issues at all. Diode by the HDMI port. I could change them. They measure fine though. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's change the diodes then. chat what on earth is going on why would i not be receiving why would i not be receiving the the, the 1.8 that i need here it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense nothing here nothing right chat i love you so much um i will try and keep you updated maybe we'll look at this next stream maybe not i don't know as you could tell from the end of that stream, I had to end it pretty abruptly. Nonetheless, it's the next day and I'm still looking at this PS5. However, I now get beep on, beep off. So I've hooked it up to UART to see exactly what's going on. When I ended the stream, it was fine. It just didn't display. And I've gone to test it today. I press the power button. It turns a blue light and then it turns off. This is the error code that I'm getting on UART, which says there's a HDMI IC problem slash power failure. So I don't know if it's something on the circuit that's now causing the HDMI ICs to blow. I really hope that's not the case. But I'm going to take the board out and check again for shorts. I think I found the issue. It was uh, it was this IC here that I didn't solder on properly in the live stream when I ended it very abruptly. So I'm going to need to go uh, go back over that. Maybe that's caused a bit of an issue with our HDMI IC. I hope not. I hope I've not made it go bang. That's a lot better. After that replace, I've gone to turn it on. I still get the same thing, the same code with UART as well. So it's saying that there's a HDMI IC issue. So I'm going to replace that and then I'll give it another go because why not? Right, I found a whole new donor board which has every single component intact. So I'm going to swap over the Y09 as well as the transistor on the back. I'm going to swap over the Panasonic chip as well and just go from there. Just completely refresh and this is my last attempt at doing it. Interestingly, I wanted to see if I inject 12 volts now without an encoder present, it goes up to 330 milliamps and then drops back down, but it's hanging on 40 milliamps at the moment. If I check here, just out of interest, I don't get any voltage on this component still. I get nothing. I do actually want to check this side as well. So here I get a 3.3, nothing. And here, nothing here either. Right, this whole video has led up to this one moment. Is it going to power on and then power off? And are we going to have a display if we are lucky enough that it powers on? We get power. Does this stay on because it was about five seconds and it would turn off? Does it go to a white light? It powers off. I don't believe it. I'm too curious to leave it there. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to UART it and see if it's saying that there's something wrong with the HDMI encoder again. Update UART says that it's still the IC but I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think it's something else in the circuit. I've just flipped the board and uh, and we have this cap here, which is obviously missing from here. Don't know if that's gonna be the reason. I doubt it, but who knows? That looks chipped to me, cracked, no? Let me get another one. Different color, same cap, by the way. Whilst I'm here, I'm actually gonna change the 15JL one as well, because why not at this stage? Do this little cap as well. I've already changed both of those resistors and diodes. All right, this will really now be the final test, by the way, because my brain is done. Three, <laughs> two, one. We get life. Does it turn off? Are you going to turn off or are you going to go to a white light, which is only half the battle here? Okay, all right, fine. I'm okay with that. 
if I'm honest, I'm very, very disappointed, not only in myself, but this PlayStation 5. What I thought was going to be a real nice, easy fix after we had the no power to power, it's ended up being one of the most stressful I've had. I don't know how many chips I've actually managed to ruin trying to fix this now. I don't know if any of those encoders actually work or whether I have just blown them up. I guess that'll be a story for a different day. I'm going to have to sell this one, if I'm honest, because with the bad run of things recently, it's not looking good. Cost was £200, wasn't it? That was just for the PS5 console. Parts, I'm sure everything has come from donor parts, so no cost incurred there. Just a massive waste. Sell price, I think I'm going to be able to get 154 this. I'll list everything I've done on the list in as usual. So we put 150, that leaves us with minus £63.50. Total profits, £81.50. Absolutely massive shout out to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. Remember to use the discount code JDT10 for 10% off. I'll leave a link to the last episode of the series up here. Thank you very much for watching. Apologies for wasting your time. Sorry I couldn't fix it, but sometimes that is just how it goes. Have a great week slash weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I am done with no display issues.